Hi, Joseph Rittenhouse. I am at the Lake Mead Recreation Area, M-E-A-D. Lake Mead is about 25 minutes drive from downtown Las Vegas from the Strip. Today we're gonna to be talking about uh, the shallows, what the internet is doing to our brains. So let's take a minute here and let's think about thinking, let's learn about learning. I spend a lot of time learning and, and creating. My educational background is in psychology and anthropology. I've learned how to drive a city bus and how to fly an airplane. I've learned four languages and I've learned that you have to be careful how you're learning. You need to make sure that you're learning in an effective way. And like the author is talking about, Mr. Carr, C-A-R-R, -R, he noticed that when he was doing his research that the internet was kind of interfering with, with his research and the way that he was doing his research was being affected. And I noticed this too. I thank God that I was born in the 80s. So I was around before the internet, during the rise of the internet, and now I use the internet, smartphones every single day. So I've seen and I can feel the difference in my studies and I can feel physically how it's had an impact, how the internet has had an impact on my life. And the way I used to study and the way I study now it's a little bit different. I can feel it. And that's where the brain part comes in. is because the tools that we use have a physical impact on our bodies and our brains. I remember going back to elementary school. Our parents, they taught us we were supposed to. We were punished if we didn't. Sit still. Sit quietly. Read the book. Do your work. Don't move until you're done. This is the way that young people are trained. Humans are trained. And this is why humans are unique in the animal kingdom because other animals, they're constantly defending themselves. They're constantly looking for shelter. They're constantly trying to protect themselves. Humans, we created societies where we could just sit around and create art, create music. We could read and write all day long and that's where the human brain is different. And it just so happens that that's one of the best ways to learn too, is to be able to sit still without having to defend yourself and worry about food and protection and the way the human brain works best is if it can look at something and think about it and read about it and then write about it and spending uh, like an hour say say for example an hour then it can really get into your memory and that's how humans are, are different than other animals humans have some amazing inventions we have this thing called a book we have written language we have uh, pens and paper and other animals don't have this sort of thing. And that's how come we're so unique and so amazing in the animal kingdom is because another human can live their life, they can write down all of their thoughts, ideas, all of their experiences into one little book and then I can come along and just pay a couple of dollars for this. I can sit still for six hours without moving, without having to worry about my food or my shelter or my safety, read these words, this written language, and then on a piece of paper I can write down what was important to me, what had an impact on my own life. And through this process, I'm able to memorize things better. And this is how humans have learned for, for many thousands of years. It's the way we learn best too. If we can be exposed to something slowly, thoroughly, and deeply, we have it in our short-term memory. We encode it, it goes into our long-term memory. And then say I did something yesterday, today I'm going to think about it again. It's going to come from my long-term memory into my short-term memory. I might think about it a little bit differently today. I might have some new feelings about it and I'll add those new thoughts to it, those new feelings to it, and it's going to go back into my long-term memory. And humans will do this over and over again. They'll bring a long-term memory into short-term memory and think about it differently, feel about it differently, and then it'll go back into long-term memory. The human brain needs time. It needs time to reinforce connections between the, the brain cells. And what we what connections we reinforce the most, we become the best at. Our skill improves the best in that area, whether it's playing the piano, flying an airplane, or learning, learning a foreign language. But we need slow, thoughtful learning to really learn things deeply. Now we have this new thing called the internet. We have smartphones, and it's, it's a human invention. Maybe we invented it intentionally. Maybe we invented it accidentally. Sometimes humans accidentally invent things. Sometimes we do it intentionally. But we don't always know how the invention is going to impact us, the way that we live, the way that we, um, the way that we behave. And we created this thing called the internet and smartphones, and now we learn differently. Now we scroll, we flip through pages, and it feels like we're learning a lot because I love it. I love the internet because I'll be traveling and I can learn about those rocks and I can learn about those plants and I can learn about 
these animals in a second. And so I can be learning about all these things throughout the day and it feels like I'm learning a lot, but to be honest, I'm not learning it very deeply. And if you ask me in a day or two what I learned the other day, I might remember one or two things, but it wouldn't be like if I sat down and read a book about, about rocks or if I read a book about the plants or the animals in this area and if I took notes. And that's what humans are able to do. We're able to write books, we're able to take notes and really learn things uh, thoroughly. That's the best way to learn. So like Mr. Carr was talking about is he noticed he was getting distracted a lot when he would, when he would study. And I, I noticed that I got distracted a lot too. It almost looks like a neurological disability. If I can feel it. Like today when I woke up, the first thing I had to do was check my phone. It's almost like biting fingernails, uh, smoking a cigarette or drinking a coffee. Some people have these habits and you got to be careful about your habits and ask yourself, is this really an effective way to be living? What's happening to me? What are these inventions around me doing to me? And is it the best thing for me? Is it uh, hurting me or helping me? Other inventions humans have created are things like uh, lights. You know, we can have light 24 hours a day now. We don't have to be going to sleep when it gets dark. We have maps, we have timepieces, we have watches now, we can keep track of time. So we created things, sometimes accidentally, sometimes intentionally, and then these things acted back on us. We created lights. Now we have a 24 hour a day society. We created maps and now I can go somewhere and I can just hand you a map and then you can know how to get there a lot more quickly than having to discover it on your own. And when we talk about going somewhere, we use map-like terminology. I say, go five miles that way, go east, go northeast, go 10 degrees to the east, something like that. Also, we have these things called uh, clocks now. We keep track of time. We didn't keep track of hours, minutes, and seconds before, but now we do and it affects the way that we talk. Now I expect you to be somewhere within a within 10 minutes and you'll tell me when something is going to happen within a few seconds and that's the way that we think now. We don't always know how our inventions are going to come back and affect us but the main point of this book and the main point that I took from it is you got to be careful how your inventions are affecting you and you got to step back and you got to say hey wait a second what is this doing to me is this the is this good for me or is this bad for me and I've noticed that the internet is good it's a tool and I can use it in good ways and effective ways to learn. But um, just be aware of how I'm learning using the internet. One example is making these videos. It forces me to slow down and learn something very deeply. On the topic of this book, for example, I had to read it, which was a slow, involved process. Then I had to take some notes on the side about what I might want to talk about. That took time and then I had to make this video. This video will take me maybe 10 takes. I'll have to do it over and over and over again because you'll make some mistakes when you're making the video. And the reason why I do this is because I've learned about learning and I've learned that if I do this, it forces me to slow down and really think about something deeply. And that's why I do it is because I want to learn something and I want it to stay with me for a long time so I'm an effective teacher and I'm also learning effectively. So I recommend you read this book. Anyone that uses a smartphone or internet or you read online or you do research online, it's important to pay attention to yourself, watch yourself and be self-reflective, introspective. Uh, from the Lake Mead Recreation Area, I'll see you in the next video.